Welcome aboard, everyone, and welcome to the premiere of By Leaps and Bounties, the 7th C actual play presented by Rook and Rasp. I am Danny, and I am the guide, the captain, the whatever. I have many names, and uh, I'll be running this shindig. And we are so happy to have you here. And I'm super excited for this. For those who don't know what 7C is, basically it is Pirates and Magic. I mean, that's that's the two word, uh, you know, pitch for it. And I think that's enough personally. Um, <laughs> like I said, we are here on Rick and Rast and we are so glad uh, you are here. We are playing 7C, the second edition um, by Chaosium. Uh, we are not affiliated with them. We just like the game. But... If you do stay, they have generously provided a PDF of the core book. If you talk like a pirate in the chat during the break, um, you will be entered to win and we will draw that at the end. And so without any further doobity do, um, I'm going to introduce and have, well, I'm gonna pawn it off onto the players to introduce themselves and their character. So let's go ahead and start with Alla. Introduce yourself, please. Hello. Um, you guys may know me from other shows here on Rick and Rasp, but I'm Alla Zilla, uh, and I am playing Nanette Primver. And uh, yeah. Primver. You know, it's, it's, it's very French. It's very French. Oh, France. All right, and John? Hi, everyone. I am John Thompson, and you probably do know me from a couple of different shows on here as well. And tonight I am playing uh, Gianni Messina, so a Vadachi rogue. Mm -hmm. And Michael. Hello. I am uh, Michael Tipton. I will be playing the part of Andreas Carraris, a uh, swordsman and sorcerer with a little friend that hangs out with him at all times. Mm hmm which you will find out more in the coming hours and chapters, I am sure. Uh, Roxy, go ahead and introduce yourself and your character. Hello, hello. Uh, I am Roxy, or Rue, as some of you may know me from the chat, and I am playing Amelia McJohnson uh, from the Highland Marches, uh, and we will see how, uh, how long that accent sticks. So, and... Place your bets now. I, I believe in you. Super excited. I am super excited because when I pitched running this, um, I had lots of people excited about this game. I'm so glad there's love for this game out there. It is awesome. I will try to kind of let y'all know about the world as we go in, just kind of interject for people who aren't familiar who might be watching. Um, for those who don't know, um, the world is called Thea, uh, T H E. A H Thea. And think of it like every country in the world kind of at the highlight of their Renaissance period. Um, you've got France during uh, Louis the 16th and Musketeers and all of that. You have Vodacci, which is Italy, and it is just, you know, all of all of the uh, you know, stuff that goes with that, you know business people and trading and stuff like that. You've got uh, the, which is where Gianni is from and um, we call it Vodacci, but it's basically Italy. And uh, we have Nanette, Alice character from Montaigne, which is basically France. And then we have uh, Amelia, Roxy's character is from the Highland Marches, which is basically Scotland. Um, Scotland in that area, think of it as very Bay under Queen Elizabeth and, and all of that area. So just think of it kind of like that. Uh, and then, of course, we have Andreas, uh, Michael's character from the Sumerian Commonwealth, which is basically like Poland and that area over there. So and as we kind of introduced under I'll mention, it's kind of like this and everything like that. And yeah, so just so you are aware of that and you won't get a little lost. Um, and I will kind of mention the rules as we go as well. So we begin. We close in on a table with a large leather 
book upon it. Beautiful leather, obviously hand-tooled lovingly. And on the front of it, it is embossed. And upon the front, it says, by leaps and bounties. Beautifully carved into the leather. And at four corners, we see four symbols on the cover of the book. We have a sorte deck that seems to have be spread out. We have a sword, uh, you know, a very kind of unique looking sword in another corner. We have a blunderbuss, a, a gun in, in the third corner. And we have what looks like a bridal veil, perhaps, in the fourth corner. The book opens. And it opens to a page where, like all the great old tomes and old books, the paper looks weathered. And we see a black and white picture of a very large, extremely large ship at night sailing away on this in this black and white picture. And below it, in beautiful calligraphy, it says, Red Sky Morning, Chapter 1. And below that, in italics, it says, Every tale worth telling starts with a choice. And we zoom in upon uh, the picture, and it slowly starts to move. And we start to hear the sound of the, the ocean. And we kind of smell the sea and the salt in the air. It is nighttime. This is the Vestin Long Hauler, the Utrecht. Vestin is basically like the Nordic area. We're talking Finland, Greenland, uh, on those area for those who don't know. This ship is from Vestin, one of these big uh, long ships that long haul. They go out for months to their route and, and bring things, uh, bring things to various places, but they specialize in not just one route. You know, some ships might go from, you know, one country to another and they kind of go back and forth. This ship specializes in, in long hauls and being out for months, months at a time. And our four characters, our heroes, have found themselves all aboard this ship leaving from Montaigne. Cherus Montaigne. Cherus is the capital of Montaigne. And it has left with the night tide. And all of these characters have found themselves on board this ship. So let's go ahead and let's start with Andreas. What has brought you uh, on board the Utrecht this evening. Well, um, Andreas uh, is kind of, he's on board because he is looking for a new sword master. And in finding said sword master, he met a gentleman by the name of Charles Exeter, who uh, is a scholar of said things. And um, Andreas is kind of helping him carry this massive number of books and probably a couple of canvas sacks that have been waterproofed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, having uh, thought he was probably going to spend a few days in the capital, but instead he ended up leaving the day he arrived. Yes, he's looking for a a new sword master. Andreas is a swordsman and a member of the Duelist Guild, and he has a goal to learn a new uh, way of fighting, a new new sword, new way of the sword. And he has heard of one um, called Ugu Tokobi, and he has found through Charles that there is someone that could possibly, he could convince to teach him, but Charles insisted on going so he could uh, observe and take notes on this, on this sword, you know, how, how he learns and on this, this sword play. Um, very interesting to him, a very rare one, not, not really seen a lot. He wants to learn all he can about it. So yes, you, you came on with Charles with a ton of books. <laughs> Um, yeah. let's go with Amelia. Um, Amelia has been on the ship for a little bit. I, this, uh, I've been working and sailing on the Utrecht now for several months. Uh, I joined down in 
uh, I can't think of the name of the the Spanish Castile Cast Puerto de Castile. Ser. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I I'm from I'm from the North Highland marches. I I know a little bit about Vesson from my father, but I know very little else about the rest of the world. As long as there's food and I can earn pay, I'll be there. Mm hmm. Right. Right. And um, very interesting um, that you did get sent on a mission just before uh, you left, didn't you? By your captain. I did. Uh, I had to go recover a sheaf of papers from someone that I was to meet there in Shirus. And, uh, well, we ran into a bit of trouble as she was about to hand over the, the goods, as it were. And, uh, well... I think that that young lad browned his trousers all the way home. I uh, don't think he'll be threatening me again with a knife. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, and part of it was that you found out that the ship was actually heading to Labuka, which is an island that is well known for housing pirates. It used to be a prison island. And Charles also had heard about this, which is where this swordmaster also um, lives. And he had been waiting for word of a way that he could get there. And it all seemed to be kismet at work out when Andreas showed up asking about it and everything. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, Gianni, how did you happen to end up on the Utrecht? Well, I am a man of shall we say, uh, humble beginnings, but a great ambition. And I heard about a map, a map where the origin will take me mm, to great riches, maybe. But before that, I need to get to Labuka myself to find uh, a man who has perhaps a map, but at least will point me in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And Nanette, how did you end up on the Utrecht? Well, to be honest, I really could not tell you. Um, <laughs> you see, today was my wedding day, and I wasn't ready for it, so I might have run away and traded my very expensive earrings for a no questions asked, stay on this ship um, that is headed where now? I thought this is going to Castile. <laughs> Ah, well, as far as you know, it is headed to Castile. And really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So, yeah, so all all of you have, uh, are on this ship and it sails off. It, it had been a beautiful day uh, in, in Cherus, in, in Montaigne, just absolutely gorgeous. And the evening is calm and cool. It is spring. So it is, it is, you know, a little bit of chill in the air, but it's warming up towards summer. Um, and, you know, so it's a beautiful evening uh, when you all head out. So, um, Amelia, you have your cot, uh, you know, on the ship, which is where you, you stay and, mm -hmm. and you work the swing shift. So you, you kind of do the second, which would be known as the second shift on the, on the ship. Yeah. Um, yep. Charles, uh, Charles Exeter, Andreas's companion, um, is given a, a little bit of a, of a room. It's not very big, um, but it's a little bit of the room. And Andreas is told that he can stay on this cot in the crew quarters if he so wishes. Um, it, the, the room, quote unquote, uh, barely fits all the books that he has brought with him, but, um, you know. <laughs> um but you were you were given a cot as well offered a cot gianni um you have given a quite a precious uh item to buy yourself passage on this ship uh acquired by totally totally virtuous means i'm sure entirely and, <laughs> and uh you've been given a bit more space um you know, a little bit of a, they do have a couple cabins and everything. And uh, I'll let you have also been given one of these, a little bit of, of larger rooms. They're a long trader, so they don't have um, a lot of space like that. But sometimes if they're, 
long hauling stuff, sometimes people want to protect their cargo. So they do have a couple spaces where people who might have a vested interest in, you know, on the stuff that the long hauler is trading can, can stay as well. And that's kind of what you two have been given um, or offered rather. Um, so let's start with Andreas. How do you, how do you spend your, your evening? working there it is yeah uh so i would um probably start with uh talking about uh, a little conversation with uh charles here be like uh because we didn't have a lot of time to talk it was kind of a we we found out about the ship and charles was ready to go i think 10 minutes later <laughs> <laughs> um so uh i would be so uh so charles where uh do you know that? Did you know the name, or is this just the place that we can find it? Well, rumor has it there is a master there, but I'm not quite sure ah. of their name. I just, I just know that there have been rumors that there is one there. I'm, I am hoping, since you are with me, that we might be able to attract some attention and, and what's it, flush them out. <laughs> I read that somewhere in a novel. Oh, can you put uh, those books over there, please? Of uh, course, of course. I... Them. Oh, oh, that might fall over. Um, Perhaps leave them in the bags for now? We wouldn't want them to get ruined from the water or the sea air. Okay, okay. Well, uh, uh, let me take out this one. Uh, I might need this one. Oh, I might need this one, too. Here, here. Uh, Oh, oh, uh, what's this one? What's this one? Oh, yes, I'll need that one, too. And he just kind of keeps taking books out of the bag that he might need as he's trying to sort through the, the books that he's got. I will leave you to your organization. Uh, and I'll step outside uh, into the sea air. Um, um, when you step outside... Go ahead, um, before, you know, you're taking your leave of Charles, and um, go ahead and give me a wits and scholarship right. roll, please. You just need one one race for this. Okay. Very easy, no consequences so, for this. Two in scholarship, three in wits, plus one for the first time it being used in the scene. Absolutely. And if you, yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, one, two, three with one extra. Okay, perfect. So, you know, as, as you're kind of discussing with Charles, you notice that on one of these bags, he does have an Explorer Society pin. Hmm. Um, Explorer I... Society is pretty well known. It's one of the more not so secret secret societies <laughs> yeah. uh, in Thea. Um, you know, they're they're basically, you know, charged with, you know, going around and, and looking, uh, you know, seeing what's out there, exploring new worlds, checking uh, you know, ruins, exploring new places and that sort of I'll, thing. Uh, I'll I'll basically acknowledge it. Um, but I'm not an explorer. I'm a duelist and um I will just continue to step out, but kind of note that for later. All right. Seems important. All right. Uh, Amelia, um, what are you going to do with your your evening? Well, it might be time for oh. your shift pretty soon. Yeah, uh, yeah. I like, uh, if it's late afternoon or even a little bit before that, I tend to... I tend to start uh, moseying about the deck and getting ready for shift about uh, three or four in the afternoon, right. I say, and uh, enough time that I get to see the sunset uh, up in the crow's nest after uh, setting some lines and things like that. Right. Well, so, you did set off with the uh, night tide, so your shift Oh, was that's right. So I'm already on shift. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you kind of, once the shift goes off, you're kind of on at that yeah. point. Yep, and so I, I spend most of my time up in the crow's nest, but I do have, uh, I've got good eyes, and I kind of keep an eye on the deck below, and especially these newcomers that are coming around, I uh, 
I keep an eye on them should any of them come up to the uh, to the deck and then I'll I'll head out I get off shift about uh, oh I don't know somewhere between midnight and two depending on if something's going on mm-hmm Go ahead and roll a wits and sailing roll, please. Okay, let's see here. Wits. And this just tell me this is just going to be for information. So depending on how many raises you get, we'll see how much you can gather from being up in the crow's nests. Sounds good. I am rolling. Let's see. It looks like seven die. So one second. So for that, let's see here, I have, let's do, man, so close to so many things. One, two, three. That is, I'm going to say that I have, looks like three raises uh, with oh. one extra if you choose to buy it. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you're up in the crow's nest. The first thing, first raise piece of Thing that you notice is it is very calm as i said but there is kind of this smell on the air that you've noticed when there may be some inclement weather coming at some point oh, okay. you don't think it's very close but but you can kind of you know hmm you know, there might be a, a tempest brewing farther out to sea. Yes, yes. Um, you also do see um a couple other ships. That's your second second range. You do see a couple other ships, but they don't look um all that suspicious or anything. You have just come out of port. Um, neither of them look to be heading in the same direction. Uh, you are. Um, and the third thing you see is you see from the crow's nest. Um, all these new people that have come that have come on board. You see, um, th this guy followed by another gentleman who looks like some kind of duelist with a bunch of books. Um, and you see what looks like. I mean, if you're a betting person, you would say they probably look Vodachi. Um, you okay. know, get on and hand something very shiny to the captain. Uh, you know, as you guys were preparing to leave. Um, I mean, didn't I see that Vodachi like flip onto the boat from a wagon or something? You did, you did, yeah. So, I don't um, understand those Vodachi. <laughs> and the last is you see this bride, this this woman, obviously dressed in a wedding dress and veil, and you see her hurriedly talking to the captain and hand him things. You know, you're up in the crow's nest watching all this going on as you're prepared to leave. Um, so over the course of, yeah, so over the course of your shift, uh, you know, you, you see, you, you know, all of these, all of these things as well. So, and, and you're a little, because, you know, the captain doesn't often do this. So, you know, it's kind of one of those, hmm, I wonder why he's taking on so many, oh, it's, it's a thing you haven't seen in the months you've been on board. Sure. Um, just, just a little unusual. I, uh, does it seem as though the captain's a little you know, flustered by all these extra writers? There definitely seems to be something going on, for sure. The captain definitely seems to be a little on edge. All right, I'll take note of that, and then, uh, at the end of my shift, I might, uh, look for him to just, if, if they're around, to ask some questions. Okay. You know, that when the, um, oh, mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. I was going to say, when the, when Exeter comes on the ship, did you say that his Explorer's badge is visible, or? Um, uh, Andrea saw it just because it was on his back. She wouldn't have noticed okay. that at that okay. point. Okay, because I've got really good eyes. I didn't know if I would have noticed it when he got on, on the ship uh, there. You know, yeah, sure. Let's say you did make a point to notice it. It's true. It's true. Okay. Yeah, I'll just okay. say that that's fine. That can be wrapped into what you noticed about them when they came on board. Okay, uh, sounds good. Yeah. Um, Gianni. Gianni, so yeah, you've been shown to your little, you know, uh, what are you going to, uh, how's Gianni going to spend his time while the ship is leaving? 
Oh, this this is quite nice. I did not expect my own cabin, so I take a look around, and I think I would go ahead and uh, probably make my way up the, the, the deck and get a feel for everyone. Uh, just seeing what there is. Uh, not my first time probably on a ship, but probably first time I'm going to be doing a major voyage of any sort. Yeah. Okay, so your cabin, I mean, it's not, I mean, this is not a passenger ship. So you have a cabin, but I mean, it has that bare, you know, bed, table, chair, you know. But I'd, basin, ex that's I'd expected <laughs> a cot, you know, or maybe a, uh, a a sling between two posts, quite honestly. So this is, to yeah. me, it's a, it's a step up. Yeah, yeah, just to be, yeah, so you go up on, on deck and... You know, everybody's kind of getting ready to to leave, and um, you know, hoisting up ropes and things like that. Um, let's go ahead and have you do a wits and and notice. You know, you're kind of looking around at everybody. Let's do a wits and notice, and let's see how many raises you get. We'll see. Okay. Uh, so for my wits, I have three, and my notice, I have absolutely none. Uh, and so I will roll with my three dice. Sweet. Well, it's the first time, so don't forget your extra die. Thank you very much. For rolling that. I'll try to remind you all. But <laughs> All right. So I rolled a two, two, and a six for a ten, and then I rolled another ten. So I at least got two uh, raises. Great. Yeah. You do note um, with your raise that um, the captain does seem to be a little... Uh, you know, you're pretty good at reading people. Like, that's what you do. That's how you make your coin. And you kind of get the sense that he's kind of tense for some reason. Uh, you know, you watch him talking to some of the crew and you kind of get that that vibe from him. Um, and the other thing you notice is this crew seems pretty veteran. Um, you know, they seem to know what they're doing. They don't have to shout a lot to each other. Everybody kind of seems to know what they're doing. Um, you know, you see they've got someone up in the crow's nest uh, keeping an eye out as you leave. Um, you know, uh, so you you might, uh, you know, you can see, notice him looking up at you, Amelia. Um, you know, the... The uh, Bodachi has come out onto the deck. I just give him, I just arch an eyebrow and look out over the sea again. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Yeah. So um, those are kind of the things that you notice. Um, Nanette. Okay. So you've been shown to one of these cabins. Um, you basically have the clothes on your back, the wedding dress. And that's it <laughs> whatever whatever you happen to be wearing at the time is, is what you have to to barter with to pay with to uh live in so um i think the passage and room was bought with the earrings um mm -hmm. but she sort of looks around and it's like this is a uh, nice i believe the word isn't nice and we'll try to see if there's a, like a like a crew child. There's always like the, one of those like urchins on on ships that she's read about. So she's like, there's there is a a child that could attend me, right? I I will pay for them. <laughs> just just to get me out of this and maybe a few clothes that aren't this. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna go this... looking for a a, a child. I... She will probably ask whoever led her here to <laughs> send an attendant. Because this, that's just how she works. Like, she can't undo her own everything. Is this, is this said below decks? Well, she's. I assume you're in your cabin right now. So okay, how are you okay. going to go about? Are you going to, like, go out of your cabin in search of someone? Are you going to, like, poke your head out and holler at the first person you see how are you going to go about solving this problem probably uh, the latter option um or just ask whoever led her there i'm assuming it was the captain or first mate or whoever yeah. is responsible for that yeah um the first mate uh was the one who showed you to your um and he told you to call him keg keg lovely um 
is there anyone I could employ for just minor things of assistance? He kind of looks you up and down and kind of note that he's probably, you know, stopping a smirk from, from, you know, reaching. He says, I will see what I can do, ma'am. And it sounds a little odd coming from him. Like he's not used to that sort of, but. Uh. Nanette on the verge of a mental breakdown says, that sounds fantastic. I will wait here. Um, thank you so much for your um, hospitality. All right. So go ahead. And um, that's what he said, but I'm going to go and have you roll. Um, let's see. Panache and convince. Let's, let's see if he, let's see how well you convinced him to do what, what, uh, what you asked him to do. All right. So uh, I have one in convince and two in panache. So that's three first uh -huh. time use. So four. Yeah. It is a single raise with an eight and a two, and then I have a, a one and a four left over. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so you leave. Uh, he leaves, and uh, you know you're you're expecting someone to show up. Um, eventually, you get you get a little knock on the door uh, of the cabin. Come in. Come in. The door opens, and it's a it's a boy. He's about, oh, maybe 10. Um, you know, he ha he's one of the, the cabin boys. They have um, one of the cabin boys on the ship, you presume. You've heard of such things. So um, this little boy is, is 10 years old. And he comes in and he just kind of, you know, is, is blinking at you. Um, he says, they told me to come and, and see you. Perfect. This is just what they needed. How good are your lacing fingers? All right. Can you get my back, please? Merci. Okay. This All is right. very difficult oh. to breathe in. <laughs> okay. So this this little boy. Uh, uh, let's let's see. Let's give him just a little bit here. Let's see what he does. Oh, okay. So it, it takes him a, a while. He, he is not as skilled as Suzette. And, uh, you know, how, how does how does uh, Nanette deal with the, the length of time and fumbling this is taking? With grace. <laughs> and occasional encouragement. <laughs> You're doing so, great. Uh... Just do it. Oh, too tight. Other way, other way. Sorry, miss. <laughs> no, this is this is fine. Um, after you are done, can you see if you can find some clothes in roughly my size for your troubles? Here is, and she pulls her necklace off and kind of um, basically un pulls one of the pearls off of it and gives him one of the pearls. <laughs> ah, there you go. He says, oh, okay, so eventually, you know, the laces are, are undone, and, and he takes off. Okay. Oh, perfect. She grabs a pillow and screams in it for, like, three hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Gianni, once you get back to your cabin, you hear weird screaming. Like, when you get, like, muffled, like some sort of muffled screaming once you get back to your cabin from checking out the deck. I hear that many ships have doctors. I did not know they also had dentists. <laughs> okay, so Andreas, uh, do you do anything else before you uh, turn in? Is there anything you want to do during the during the evening? or? You, I would definitely have walked up to like uh where i could get a view and kind of like watching the ship go out um mm. uh just you know because obviously i've just got a, a cot or a hammock below decks so i'm not i'm not in any hurry to get down there um mm -hmm. so it's a beautiful view i mean you can see uh Charouze off the the 
um, the end, you know, off the back of the ship, um, you know, the lights and everything like that, you know, and the sea looks calm straight ahead. No. Hmm? I forgot to tell my cousin I wouldn't be there tonight. Oh, no. Those kids are going to be so disappointed. I know. They were so sweet, too. He's probably hyping them up at home. Um, <laughs> oh, my. Uh, um, he, uh, he, 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 uh, he kind of looks around and he thinks he's like, um, I would say delivering messages is something you do for a battle. Wouldn't you agree? Really? I have turned the tides of armies. And you want me to send a message? Yes. It's just minor. I mean, all it is is a simple note that said, hey, had to leave too quickly. Uh, we'll catch you on, my next way, uh, on the next time around. Very well. When you next pass the statue of a warrior, wherever you happen to be, mm -hmm. I want you to spill a little bit of blood in their honor, and I will do this thing for you. Fair. Very fair. Um, I'm nothing if not fair. Oh, yes. Huh. <laughs> so those who might be a little confused, Andreas um, is a sorcerer, and he has a Davis, a lovely, handsome individual you see uh, behind Michael there. Um, basically, Andreas has... Uh, gotten involved in several deals with this Davis that allows him to do certain things um, in exchange. So, yeah, so uh, please take note that uh, the next time you pass a statue of a warrior, you must uh, offer some blood in your in honor of that Davis, of your Davis. Noting it down now. I do appreciate it. I know you're just taking time out of your very busy schedule, hanging out with me, observing everything around me. Your family aren't averse to blood, are they? Oh, well, too late now. They didn't... Ah, oh, man... Well, there goes me keeping this secret. I'm just imagining that they come home and it's like the family rat or something has been converted into a, a very cryptic warning. <laughs> no dinner tonight. <laughs> this is why I knew I knew I should have written a note, handed it to you, and just made it be there. I knew I should have done it. I was too... Mm. Mm. <sighs> all righty then um anything else in particular before andreas uh heads down to the the quarters or cot that he has been given uh, no he would just basically spend a few hours probably watching the stars rise and um probably about as much time as someone is screaming is being when he finally decides to head Good down hour. Three hours. I think three hours. hours was the time limit. Yeah, period. yeah. <laughs> Give or take. Um, Amelia, you you would take note of this as well. Up on the crow's nest, the uh, the the gentleman who came in with the guy with a lot of books, you know, kind of, you know, wearing my uh, wearing my bright red jacket. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you do see him on the deck, uh, looking Hi. about as well. Down there. You might change your jacket so I could see the bloody stars next time. Thanks, bud. Excuse. Uh, I, don't this is, uh, very... I don't know why I went Midwestern at the end there. What's wrong with my jacket? Yeah, bright, gaudy. It's gonna get. I wouldn't wear it out at sea. Sometimes we have to be stealthy and quiet. That jacket damn near glows. <laughs> uh, he starts like undoing this massive white sash that's around his waist that's on the outside of the jacket. And that is never going to stay white on this ship. I'll promise you that. <laughs> uh, probably not. I mean, I do have a spare, but I clean it often. Um, but uh, He like unbuttons it and then it's just this bright white shirt. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Well, if any passing ship sees us, they'll just think we have a ghost on board. That's fine. <laughs> they'll leave us alone. Not, I, I do have a bit of a tan. I wasn't in the capital that long. Oh, not, not, <laughs> not your, no, your, never mind. No, I'm just trying to play nice with the new people. I... <laughs> oh, and uh, your name? Uh, you can call me Ace. Uh, Ace, nice to meet you. Uh, Andreas. Nice to meet you, Andreas. I guess I'm not being quite stealthy either, shouting at you from the crow's nest. Of course. Uh, could be worse. You have to pass time somehow on our ship. I mean. <laughs> right, you know. All right. So, uh, Amelia, so after your shift and, and keep in mind, everybody kind of, these things are kind of happening like over the course of, of the night in various, you know, ways. So, you know, we might have to like slip back a little and then move forward for some of the conversations, but basically all that stuff happened during your shift, Amelia, like, you know, sure. you seeing Gianni, you talking to Andreas, you noticing all these things. Um, so once you get off shift, what are you going, what, what is you going to do? The captain uh, is around. The captain is around? Ah, good. Um, yes. I his am... name, uh, I, I will give you his name. Uh, his, okay, so Vestin, um, which Amelia would be aware, they have a true name, which is their Vestin name that has all the history, their family and stuff at that. But they also have a trade name that they, use when they're when they're out and about mostly they choose names from other countries uh the utrecht chosen not to do that they usually choose things um your captain goes by wheel uh as his trade name um the first mate goes by keg and the uh gunner your friend uh, goes by gun simply he's not very creative but you know that's not what you hire him for so uh <laughs> But his actual name is, uh, the captain's actual name is Jorun Borson. All right. And he is a massive Vestin. I, uh, uh, Captain Wheel. Ace? Uh, I won't keep you long, sir. I just... Notice we took on quite a few passengers today. More than, uh, more than I thought, seeing as we're not really a passenger ship. Yes. Ace, as always, you're observant. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to do, but trust me when I say that it was probably necessary. Well, I mean, it's, it's fine. I wasn't questioning anything i was just surprised i didn't know if if our mission had changed uh from what i thought it was before we set uh before we ported it or uh, charus well we will stop at castile before we head along to la boca most of the crew are made aware that we are heading here heading there um I think the other guests are quite aware as well. At least two of them are, from what I suspect and what the first mate has reported to me. 
but uh, there's one who I don't know if she knows where she is going. But uh, passengers provide cover, and that is what we need right now. Sure, sure. Um, it's actually that last that I'm a little concerned about, sir. Uh, so when you sent me to meet the uh, the woman in red, she was that bench was right in front of a church where there was a mighty large wedding to do happening, flower petals everywhere and pipers piping and the lot. And uh, you know. I don't. I didn't get the chance to tell you. I don't think, but I had a, a boy uh, or a, a young man, tried to uh, pull a gun on us, when I was getting those papers, and I don't know if they came from the wedding or any of that, and it might be jumping to conclusions as it were. But I'm not sh- quite sure how I feel about bringing on that that runaway bride. I understand your feelings, Ace. It seems that someone got wind of where we were actually going, despite my best efforts to prevent it. As for the bride, she paid for her passage with something that will repair the ship for quite a while. Well, I, you know. If my eye is still good for jewelry, that is. I mean,. I think it's fine, and I think there's enough of us here that if something were to come up from her that uh, we'd be able to handle it, but uh, I just wanted to make make a connection there in case I didn't say it before. I appreciate it, Ace. And my hope is that she'll uh, be gone on ca- at Castile before we move on to our actual destination. I do have uh, one question for you, and that is, uh, where did Cake put her? I have a feeling she's going to be needing some clothes. Uh, She's down in one of the cabins. Uh, He said something about sending one of the boys down. There are two cabin boys on the ship. Okay. Okay. Yeah. They're twins, actually. Uh, Brothers. Are they orphans, or do they belong to somebody on the ship? Yeah. That's okay. Um, The captain took them on to, to teach them and give them a way to make a living, and and all of that. They're about 10 years old. They've been on this ship for about a year or so. So they were very young um, when they started. And they've kind of grown okay. up and been a part of it. So um, they were on board when, when you came on board as well. Okay. Um, Sound, sounds good. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I suppose it couldn't hurt to check she was in that fancy dress. Yeah. And I mean... <laughs> The last time you took on a, a a woman to work, I mean, obviously she's not here to work, but uh, the last time a woman joined the ship, uh, and I kind of point at myself, just in <laughs> case he couldn't remember, and I, uh, you put me to work, and that dress ain't gonna work, uh, the lines. That veil will get caught <laughs> real fast. Well, if you want to take that upon yourself, I'd consider it a kindness. All right, yeah, I, I, uh, I uh, say, well, thank you, sir. Uh, I will see you on the morrow. And I disappear out of the galley or wherever the captain was at the helm. Or he was wherever. on the, the deck and he had kind he of was been, on the deck. Uh, yeah, he was on the deck kind of, you know, looking out at everything and everything. He's usually, uh, he was usually down, you know, uh, in his cabin by now. But, you know, it seemed he was, you know. Not quite ready to yet oh. when you got off ships. So. As I as I start to uh, leave, I spin real quick and I'm like, one thing I did mean to tell you is that, uh, you know, I've told you before that when there's a storm brewing, there's kind of a scent on the air. I don't know if you picked it up, but it's definitely here tonight. So uh, I'll let mm-hmm. I'll let whoever my sh- whoever takes over for me after I get off shift, I let them know before I left the crow's nest. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then I will go to my, uh, wherever my hammock is and wherever I keep, uh, I'm sure, a, a dingy sack of, of, of clothes 
and mm-hmm. uh, or if I have a dresser, I don't I don't know what what my quarters are like. I assume I'm in a hammock in a room with a bunch you of do, other. You do, but everyone kind of has like a a chest or something for their stuff. Okay. Uh, and I go through and I kind of like pull out some stuff and and I put that one back and then I find something else. <sighs> And uh, we didn't get to, we didn't, we weren't in Charousse long enough to, to do laundry. So I, I pick one that smells the least briny and uh, maybe just is a little stiff from seawater. And I, I hand it out, I, I uh, take it, uh, maybe a couple, maybe a pair of trousers. I don't remember exactly the, the cut and measurements of, of the bride, but uh, I take a few changes of clothes that I mm-hmm. can spare and find where where she's screaming and I'm as I walk through the hall I'm yeah. like what's that wine you you do so, see a, one of the cabin boys um you know coming down the hallway and he's got like a you know a, a handful like in his arms like of some clothes as well and you see him you know stop at a door and he sees you and uh you know he kind of you know n- Acknowledges your presence as you pull up to the door. I I squeak. Uh, just uh, <laughs> hold on there. I'm gonna. Is she in there? Do you have that wine? Uh, <laughs> she. Um. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I hear that. What is that? Doesn't sound I like pu- the ship. Oh, I didn't hear it above decks, but I think it's coming from a room. What do you think that is? It's like, I don't even know what that's like. Well, how long has that Does been going on? Does she have a cat? I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't see it. Kind of sounds like a cat. One time I put a barrel on the cat's tail and, and, you know, it kind of made I, a sound like that. Yeah, no, no, uh, let's not. Let's not do that on the ship. <laughs> let's not do that on the ship. It was an accident. I, I know. I know, Squeak. Why, uh, it's she late. She gave me a you... pearl to bring her this stuff. Oh, here, give it to me. I'll take it. Uh, keep the pearl, but, uh, it's late. You and Pip should be in bed. Go on. Pip Squeak. I love it. They are now Pip and Squeak. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, okay. So, uh, you have these clothes now. Uh, you gonna knock? You gonna shout? You gonna? Uh, how how I'll, are we? I I'll I'll knock and and say, um, bride, what are you doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like there's a, a pause in the the what you assume is some sort of wailing and or murder. Um, but after like a minute or two, uh, the door kind of creaks open, and there's. A very disheveled looking young woman. She's got, clearly, she was wearing some cosmetics at the time, and it is now just kind of like a schmear. Sh- is there, is there a face pillow? print on your pillow, Silks? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't y'all okay. take this opportunity to describe your characters? There are some lovely photos as well. There should be pictures that y'all should see as well. But um, why don't you go ahead and... Uh, Ally, describe what Nanette looks like, and then Amelia can, uh, Roxy can describe what Amelia looks like, just so we have some idea. Right now is probably not at her best. Um, (laughs) clearly she had hair styled previously, but now it is sort of just like a frizzy mess, kind of brownish color. Um, obviously cosmetics just, like strewn all over the the joker kind of makeup look but less um i guess clean <laughs> she is on the normal build size definitely softer because she clearly lived a life of luxury and the whole like let them eat cake but only cake really um okay. so she's <laughs> she's of a fill, fuller figure sure sure um I, I do my best to not, like, focus on your face so much, but to focus anywhere else also seems rude. So I'm just, like, trying not to say anything and or react. So <laughs> it's just... Um, but Amelia is kind of tall, about 5'10". Uh, a, a leaner build. Uh, you can tell that she's been working the lines and the, the sails for a little bit now. 
Um, she is very broad of shoulder, has long red hair that she keeps usually back in a braid, and there are freckles on her face. Um, not super prominent, but they're definitely there in the light. And uh, she wears a hat uh, and usually a vest or sometimes a jacket, depending on what the weather calls for. And um, yeah, she she definitely looks as though she's from the Highland Marches. So she does bear the... Uh, but her skin is not as pale as you might assume. Uh, it's got a little bit more color to it. So... Um, uh, uh, you are not hello, Miss... Nip. Uh, uh, are you here to um, assist me? I mean, uh, well, I came to bring you some clothes. Do you, do you need assistance? I've... Okay, I, I think Pip got the worst of it. I, I, I should be fine. Thank you for the clothes, um, ma'am. Here, here's, sir. What do I? What do I call you? What is polite? <laughs> uh, you can you can call me Ace. Most of the crew on this ship will go by. I mean, you can call me Ma'am too, but I'm not in any power, any sort of authority on the ship. So, um, as it were, I did want to bring you some extra clothes. I had some older stuff. I tried to pick the nicer. They could still use another launder, but uh, this is as good as it gets right now. That is very kind of you. Um, as you can see, I I have very few possessions to my name. Um, I've seen. I've thank seen. you. Um, you don't have to worry about giving me any jewelry to pay for them. It's it's all right, really. I don't. But uh, excellent. Um, that makes a note of that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all right. I'll tell you if something costs something. Um, Are there as any is, boots I could? Um, I bet I can scrounge up some boots. Do you know? Let me see your foot. It, Nanette has taken off her shoes, and as she lifts up her foot, it is clearly, um, you know how ballerina feet are just kind of all kinds of effed up. Hers is mm -hmm. also probably from running across all of um, <laughs> sure town is. just to get <laughs> to the dag. Just to. From the church to the docks, it, they are um, kind of bloodied in places. Um, and she's like, they're usually nicer than this. <laughs> Don't um, worry about that. I kind of, I kind of, uh, you know, I, I do react to that. I've seen pirate feet for, or I've seen shipsman's feet for Christ's sake. And that's, that's whoa, uh, well, did your shoes fit? The ones you no, had? No, they did not. Okay, then let's. I'll just, and I kind of, I just hold my hands out and I kind of measure with my thumbs and my forefingers and I'll find you some boots. Uh, yeah, don't, don't do that to your feet. Uh, if you, no, on a ship, you gotta have good feet. If your feet are bad, it, everything else is worse, I promise. Um, I'll scrounge up some boots. I'm sure we've got some somewhere that actually you are fit. much too kind. Um, it, where can I find some fresh water to freshen up? Uh, well, down near the galley, there will be a barrel full of uh, some rainwater that uh, we put down. And there's there's more barrels up top that are a little fresher, probably. That you and can... where exactly is the galley? And what is it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> before we go, before we go... Have you ever worn just like a shirt before, or are you all dresses and gowns? No, I, I've worn clothes besides gowns. Okay, good. Okay. That's, that's a she? good start. Or is she, or is she fitting? Night gowns. Are you lying? <laughs> Night gowns. <laughs> <laughs> They're practically shirts, right? <laughs> I mean, she's, she's been hunting before, so she's probably worn trousers. Ladies She's wanna wear seen trousers. Nope. Seen trousers. I would yeah. figure it out. You know, I my family is in the mercantile business of um, trading textiles, so I am familiar with styles of dress. Okay. Okay. Um if you don't like trousers, and I kind of hold up the pair of trousers, I do I can let you wear my kilt, but I don't know. I don't know if you'd like that, but it's more like a dress than a 
I thought they were white trousers. trousers. Okay. Now he excites you for me. Um, but it's fine if you're barefoot now. There's not a lot on the floor that should hurt you too bad after whatever the hell you'd done with them before her now. But uh, I'll show you where the galley is, and then I can show you a, a, a few places. Uh, I just, uh, out of character, I don't know, like, time-wise, like, if there's, like, a... Uh, like the lavatory or anything like that. What what we use for any of that? But I'll show I'll show her all the places that I think are important. Yeah. For yeah, well, to... I mean, they're basically like a couple rooms that have like holes in there that go down to the bilge pump and stuff like that. It's okay. Yeah, that's why I was like, I didn't know if they just like went out to the side of the boat or what they did. But okay, that's nah, they, they, I'll they show her that, where. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. I'll sh I'll show her where all the important things are, and. uh and yeah, I will uh, show her where the, the barrels of rainwater are that we use to just yeah. do light cleaning. You, I, I wouldn't you, recommend drinking it unless you're in a real strait, but... Yeah, uh, you do have Nanette in your room, like a little basin in a pitcher. It's like ceramic. It's kind of beat up, but, you know, it's there. Um, it works. If you wanted to use that. Okay, so let's... um. Leave y'all there for a second, getting the net settled. And Gianni, uh, what are you going to, what is Gianni going to spend his evening uh, doing? Uh, well, I don't, so far, I do not have to entertain any of the people here. I have, a, I, I think the captain said to, in two days and then at rotation. Mm -hmm. So, not really a whole lot Uh talking to people uh, you know i'll drop back some from i'll talk to people and we'll walk around uh see what exactly all there is uh you know and honestly uh if if i notice that there's a little bit of a tension i will probably go ahead and uh do a you know read people mm -hmm. you know uh basically looking to see where their fates lie okay do you want to do that do you want to go ahead and, and use your your fate? yeah uh so read is a free uh you know it, it just basically for the most part if i really wanted to take a deep look uh it'll show me their arcana and stuff like that if i really want to go that direction okay so, um, so you will, do you need to, you need to spend for that? Uh, no. So, uh, the way it reads is that, uh, use, uh, using read requires no hero points or lashes and only has a singular effect, uh, in order to use any other re, uh, weave, uh, I must first read and see the arcana around me. Uh, if I cannot see physically, if I have no ability to see, if there's like an obstruction, I can't see the, uh, the weave. Okay. So it just allows you to see the threads of their fate. That's it. Yes. Right. Okay. So you're on the sh on the the deck and you're doing that, and um, you see, are you reading anybody in particular? The captain. Or the captain. Okay. Okay. So from the captain, you see uh, a thread heading out to sea. And from your experience, um, it, it's a worry. It's it's a conflict of some kind. It, it's it's uh it's not a an amicable uh, relationship. It is, um, but it is something that's prevalent at the moment for the captain. It's it's a very prevalent thread that seems to be at the forefront of things. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely take note of that, but, uh, do I see anything else? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm really looking to see if perhaps I see any lines of fate that are fading as if there is imminent danger of loss of life or anything like that. You do see another thread that kind of seems to go down into the hold from the captain that kind of seems to be connected to that other thread. It's almost like another thread that kind of goes down into the hold of the ship. Very interesting. 
All right. Uh, but then I, I might actually go ahead and just out of curiosity, follow that thread. All right. Cool. Um, so how are you, uh, what's your approach to doing this? Is he just going to be like, hey, is he going to try to be stealthy and have no one notice him? Or he's just going to kind of be like, I'm a land lover walking around the ship. How, what's his going to be his attitude as he's kind of following this little thread? I am a tourist as far as, you know, I'm just like, oh, look at this. Oh, oh. And I just wander in the direction of the thread. And just like, if somebody stops me, they stop me. But otherwise, yeah. Okay. Um, the thread, you seem to follow it to the captain's quarters. You're now standing in front of the captain's quarters door. I think this door is very important. <laughs> Knock. Uh, you saw the captain up above. Uh, so, you know, he's not down here. He may have a friend, a companion that stays in the room. It's true. No one answers, though, when you knock. If uh, nobody uh, is looking around, nobody's near me, I might slip in. Or try, anyway. All right. That's going to be a risk. So, okay. So, for a raise, you will be able to get into the room. But you will need another raise. This is the consequence for getting caught. So you will need two raises to pick the lock and not get caught doing it. And let's see. We're going to go with, this is going to be a, I'd say it's details probably. Um, You're trying to try to pick a lock. So let's go ahead and theft for theft. sure mm -hmm. on skills. And finesse, probably. It's detail work trying to get into this All right. Lock. So I have a, uh, for theft, I have three. For finesse, I have two. First time using this skill in the scene. Yeah. Uh, and I'm actually going to do something here in a moment just for fun uh, so we can get that out of the way. But I'll go ahead and make my roll. Uh, by Will's, uh, I'll actually drop it. I'll let you know. I'm going to go ahead and spend my hero point on got it. Uh, which is the automatic and immediate picking of the lock. All so I can right. I, I automatically pick a lock or disarm a trap just by spending that hero point. All right. So does Gianni do, if you if you come up with some sort of quip or do something with a little bit of flair, you could get an extra die. Oh, I've seen this lock before, I think. I oh, were very nice old friends. Better than that, you know. I just don't think our relationship will last. <laughs> All right, cool. So I'll give you an extra die for that. So you're going to have seven, I think. All right. Uh, so all told, I have rolled uh, a 10. Uh, and So that's one raise, an eight and three. That's another raise, another eight and a three, which is another raise. And then a nine and a five, which will finish me out with another raise. So all told, that should be four raises. All right. Perfect. So you get in there. You are not seen by anyone. Uh, slipping in, you're as quiet, you know, as, as anything slipping in. And you're now in the captain's quarters. By far the nicest quarters you've seen on the ship, having walked around a little bit. Um, bed desk, papers all over it. The captain is a very neat person, actually. Um, you know, everything is it seems to have a place and put away and all of this stuff. Um, and the thread that you've been following goes into the room and there is a locked chest at the foot of the captain's bed. And the thread seems to be heading in that direction. Well, hello, lovely. I uh, approach the chest, give it a good look over. And I just pat it. I'm just like, soon. Soon, friend. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and um, if there's any, we will say, you know, Andreas, you know, you kind of, you had talked to, to Charles. And, uh, you know, Ivana gone up on the deck and everything. But eventually, uh, you know, unless there's anything super imperative, 
Um, you're going to go to your cot. Um, Amelia, after helping, uh, uh, did you give her your name, Nanette? Um, she probably did. Yeah, at some point <laughs> while they're doing the little tour, and yeah. Nanette's like, you know, trying to find her sea legs. Um. <laughs> so both of you, since you kind of are doing stuff together, eventually, you know, you find a pair of boots that'll probably work. I mean, you have to adjust. You might have to stuff some stuff in. Them. I mean, it's a ship full of people with big flat sailors' feet, so you may have to stuff some stuff in the toe just to make it fit a little bit better. But you do find something and uh, get her some clothes. They they are mostly too big, but uh, you know, you can tie it in certain places and. You know, it's not going to fall off <laughs> or anything like that. Um, but eventually, yeah, you you finish all that. And I would assume eventually everybody, you would head to your cot and you would head to your room then eventually. Excellent. And then Gianni, uh, after you leave I mean, soon, I assume you kind of lock up and, and, uh, and all of that. And you guys have all had a good look around. Um, at the ship, the Utrecht, you've, you've inter you know, met a couple of y'all and everything like that. When morning finally comes uh, on the ship, um, the two people who have cabins, um, you know, there's red, it seems like red light coming through the little porthole in your room. Beautiful red as dawn is, is, is coming. Um, and Andreas and uh, Amelia, when you finally get up on deck in the morning, um, you know, it's kind of hard to sleep on, you know, shifts are coming and going and everything. So, you know, when morning finally comes, it is an absolute red sky. If you go out to look um, on the deck, eventually, all, all of you would see this. It's the, the sky is, you know, the sun is coming up uh, in the east and the sky is a, a really deep kind of blood, you know, orange red color, which, you know, lets Amelia know that she was probably correct. As the saying goes, red sky at night, sailors delight, red sky in the morning, sailors take warning, which generally means that there is going to be a storm coming very, very soon. But at that point, y'all are up on the, the deck, I'd assume, and, uh, you know, checking this out and, and you know, and you all are, are there. You can definitely see each other. Um, you know, uh, Amelia knows Nanette already and has met Andreas, has not exactly met Gianni there, and uh, the others have not met each other, but... Um, and the other sailors are gathering, too. This is very, um, I mean, you know, you've seen red skies before, but nothing quite like this. So even the other sailors uh, on the ship are kind of taking it in. It seems to be kind of a, a little bit of an event, a little bit. And the captain is is up. You're not quite sure if he's gone to bed, Amelia, um, at all. And he's standing on the deck very much the same place that you had left him in. Uh, when you when you went back down to help Nanette, and he's kind of standing, looking out at the dawning sun as well. I uh, I bring him what passes for coffee on the ship, and uh, sip my own, and say, "Well, don't take this the wrong way, Cap, but what the hell have you gotten us into this time?" <sighs> I'm not quite sure, Amelia. I guess we'll find out. Uh, oh, we we given real names now, eh? <laughs> must be serious. Mm -hmm. He kind of, you know, takes the coffee and, you know, gives you a little pat on the shoulder. Continues brooding, but doesn't really say much more unless you want to try to dig further. Um... Is there anything? I'm not exactly known for my uh, charisma, <laughs> so so I don't know if I could uh, weasel anything out of him. So I just I wait there for a minute. I'm a few steps away and see if he says anything else. Finish my own coffee and uh, return back down from where he was. Mm -hmm. uh, Andreas, you're you're 
seeing all this, what what are you going to be? Uh, up there, kind of looking around. Uh... Yeah, the 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 crew seemed to be very kind of, you know, taking in the the sunrise. Um, I mean, is it even uh, is it is it is it unnatural in its redness, or is it just like a like a like a is is it seem very unnatural or more of a just it's just a red sunrise? You have never seen anything like it, and you hear oh. your Davis in your head say something like, uh, "There will be blood spilled today." Of course, you would know. I kind of reach down and cinch my sword belt just a little tighter, making sure it can't move. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, kind of ease over and go. That's a uh, uh, too random person who's also kind of looking out but not overly busy i imagine there's at least two people who fit that description um yeah yeah johnny and nanette <laughs> for sure or you could catch amelia on her way back down i mean i'm so just i'm just carrying a coffee cup in. down to the galley yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. Uh, and i go it's that's a very that i've spent some time outside and i've never seen a sky that red like, that's almost as red as, and he looks down at his jacket. Me? I've, uh, do you sail much? Uh, parts of my family do. I, I, I did not take in that trade. All I have to say is that this is not a good sight. So just, uh, if we need help, uh, I could literally show you the ropes. But it's so pretty. And then she leans over and vomits. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, it's she's really never beautiful. Been on a boat <laughs> Jenny, so you're obviously up there too, so you could, uh, you know, what is what is Gianni reacting to this going on and this conversation happening? So many people have joined the crew. I did not expect. Uh. I, uh, I'm looking over at uh, Nanette vomiting off the uh, edge of the ship. I'm this. I, I'm more in awe of. Yeah, I, I see we're going for distance. Does she have? Does Nanette have long hair? Uh, in the in the art, it's very curly and scrunchy. Is it? She's sort of um, tied it back with some scraps of what you assume is probably wedding dress. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good thing you tied your hair back, lass. Uh, just keep aiming out. Uh, one of the boys will have to clean it later if you don't. Watch for the wind. Is that silk velvet? The shock is she wonderful. nods and then she just vomits some more. <laughs> well, uh, exactly what is going to be happening? You, I, I overheard you said that something bad will happen. I, I, I mean, she would know better than I, but I, I also have an eerie feeling about this. Is it an omen? Like, uh, are we expecting pirates or, uh, what exactly? Uh, if you don't mind. And, uh, just to kind of give an idea with everyone else on the deck, uh, my character, I know that most of y'all are on the taller end. I'm five foot two. <laughs> And... Yeah, it's a good idea to describe. So go ahead, and then we'll have uh, Michael do the same for Andreas. I have. I'm kind of stocky in build, with you know, pretty much masculine features, uh, pencil thin mustache, uh, and for the most part, though, I look fairly nondescript. It's like if somebody could have taken like a really good nose, a really good set of eyes, a nice chin, and none of them really go together, though. That would be a good description of Gianni. It's like he's he has attractive features, but he's not necessarily an attractive person. <laughs> um, Andreas, uh, on the other hand, is more average height, like five seven, five five eight, like very much like average in your height wise of uh, those across the the nations. Um, but his build is like leaner and more athletic. Um, due to years of practicing sword play and needing to be able to be very maneuverable. So it doesn't seem like an, uh, 
it wouldn't seem like his body is built for power, but for speed and accuracy. So, uh, perhaps somebody can explain what what this sky means. Oh, well, I mean, it's just a it's a saying, and it proves true most times that if the when the sun comes up, if the sky lights up in any color of red, especially this this is a really really dark almost a natural shade of red that we're seeing this morning but it, it doesn't mean anything good uh generally i tell you okay uh i i appreciate the information i've i've read about this it is because of how the clouds are that it is such a bright redness it usually means that there is uh storms right Usually, yeah. And there was, uh, last night when on my shift, I, I noticed that there was a scent upon the air that might, well, just, let's just say it doesn't indicate anything good weather-wise. And with that, uh, you all hear a loud thunderclap, just like this rumble of thunder. And the red kind of seems to fade and it starts to keep darker and you can see a wall of storm clouds that seem to have appeared over the minutes that you were talking. You're not quite sure, but uh, you know, they're, they're very, very dark. It's morning and the sun is rising, but it has become dark and you hear this huge rumble of thunder and all the crew starts to look at each other. And the captain says, Everybody batten down! Prepare for the storm! And with that, I would like to take a 10-minute break. It is about 7.30. And we will take a 10-minute break. Uh, remember, you can buy things from, um, you know, to help out during the game. Um, there's a list of things that should be there. You can buy with cash and help name NPCs or bring an NPC into the game. Um, you can buy rerolls and hero points and things like that as well with channel points. So we will, uh, with the thunder looming and the storm looming in the in the distance, uh, we will take a break. Join us in ten minutes. And really quick, uh, that also means that we'll go ahead and do our uh, giveaway. So if you are in chat, be sure to uh, toss in there uh, during the break. Uh, something speaking like a pirate, and we will get you in, put it in, and you have a chance to win the core RPG. All right.
to the second half of Red Sky Morning, the premiere of the 7th C actual play presented by Rook and Rasp by Leaps and Bounties is what we're calling this. And this is chapter one. Um, so hopefully you all were talking like a pirate in the chat. Are you all wanting to do that um, at the end before we get back to it? No, we can actually go ahead and announce right now that uh, we have uh, we had eight entrants and we uh, went ahead and did a random roll and it is Janae Sasquatch. You are the winner of the book. Uh, what will be happening is we will be contacting you uh, through our socials uh, really quick, you know, uh, probably by the end of tonight. And we will be getting you in contact specifically with our contact for Chaosium and they will be sending you the copy. Awesome. Congratulations. That's cool. And then you can follow along and read all about these different countries and everything. So totally awesome with that. And then get lost in the deeper stuff and own yes. all the books. And <laughs> yeah, we'll just. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, when last we left, there was this brilliant red sky and there were storm clouds, a storm wall, essentially, um, coming for the ship, the Utrecht. And the captain had just shouted, uh, everybody, prepare, prepare for the storm. I, uh, I kind of, uh, if Nanette seems like she's not projectile launching anything, I... I grab the back of her shirt and I kind of pull her back. I hand her the, the the cup that I had and I'm like, go below decks, take this to the galley, get in your room and stay down. I, I think I can do that. Oh, can I can I help with anything else? Oh, you know what? I'll just do what you said. I'll do what you said. I think that's I think that's the safest route. Maybe maybe later, but right now just just hold on. <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. And what are Gianni, uh, what's Gianni going to do? Uh, Captain, I will be very quick, but I wish to give you my blessing. I won't and... say no. <laughs> oh, what was that? He says, I won't say no. As he still, he doesn't really look at you. He's staring out at the storm wall. And he's standing, you know, looking out at the storm wall. And when you say that, he says, uh, you know, I won't, you know. I won't, I won't stop you. Uh, when I look at him, what is uh, his arcana? What is his uh, arcana overall? I, I know I'm throwing this at you really quickly here, uh, but I'm, I'm trying to see if I want to activate that or change it. Let's see. Let me see. Give me one second. Let's 
second. And for our audience out there, uh, within character creation, uh, there are uh, arcana done with a, you know, themes from a tarot deck. And uh, every character has a arcana that creates a, a virtue and a hubris. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can give you bonuses towards things. And they can also uh, be things that detract, but at the same time, build the story. Mm -hmm. uh, my character has the ability to affect those within people he is um he has the arcana of the emperor um, excellent the virtue is commanding uh the hubris is hot-headed all right i am going to go ahead and i will take a lash to activate his uh arcana because I, mm -hmm. I know that one is really good in this situation Mm -hmm. uh, and then I will also give him a blessing. I will uh, pull out a cross and say a very quick, or you know, the, the, the symbol of the traditionalist uh, church within this uh, universe. Mm -hmm. And I say a very quick blessing of, uh, you know, may these hands give you give us strength, and may these uh, may this mind be quick to think. Uh, yes, it rhymes. Do not blame me. And I, uh, I kiss his hand, and I will uh, impart a plus two bone, uh, plus two to his dice pool uh, for uh, rolls that I hope go towards sailing this ship. Right. Exactly. Perfect. Um, Andreas, no, going for you... drinking. Yes. <laughs> Andreas, what are you do? Uh, Andreas is um, also of n absolutely zero use in this situation. You <laughs> don't have of... to be. That's your Davis. <laughs> uh, yeah, you. You know, just I gotta work on controlling my face. That's that's what it is. You just read me like a book. Um, so uh, I am going to uh, offer. Basically, go below decks as well, um, and uh, basically do my best to stay out of everyone's way. Um, probably head down to the galley as well, or wherever is I can help put things away or lash things down if I can. Maybe who knows? You do see uh, the 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 young woman who is hurling over the 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 deck, looking around when she has a couple. Uh, I of will. Uh, step, uh, come closer. To, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. I'm, I'm Andreas. Oh, um, bonjour. I, I am Ninette. Um, I just, I'm, I've lost where the galley was. I switched to flawless, uh, Montaigne. And, oh, merci uh, beaucoup. uh, if this is easier for you, um, uh, and, uh, this way, I believe, um, yes, uh, if nothing else, we'll find it together. Oh, thank you so much. Um, yeah, he's he's carrying himself well. <laughs> yeah, Ninette but, uh, is still very much hanging on every single wall, trying to like keep herself. Oh, he's not safe. doing much better. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yes, um, uh, yes, this way, and he'll lead her as quickly as he can. To the uh, to the galley. Cool. All right. So thank so you. you. Oh, you're uh, very welcome. Crew members down there are quickly, you know, putting things in barrels, tying the barrels down. They're doing all sorts of stuff to try to uh, make sure things don't fall and break or spill out or anything. If if the ship starts now, this is a huge ship, so it will take a bit. But um, the size of those storm clouds, uh, you know, you you might y'all might be in for a rough ride, and that's pretty obvious to all of you, even if you don't have any sailing experience. Just looking at these clouds, you know, it doesn't look uh, doesn't look good. I'm sure so, the response uh, from the crew doesn't look good either. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so uh, Gianni has given uh, a blessing to the captain. Nanette and uh, Andreas have delivered the cup and I assume now are helping to lash things down at that point. As Probably as best as they can with their untrained sea legs. All right. And uh, Amelia... Amelia, your your position. What do, what do you feel would be Amelia's position in this in this sort of situation? Uh, I would not be in the crow's nest if I could all help it, but I may uh, I may run to the uh, the bow of the ship and uh, use my spyglass to see if I can see anything towards that wall of storms. If there's other ships out there, or if I can see anything particular about the storm. I'm not a meteorologist, but I've been on the ocean a bit, so maybe I can see, tell something of the winds. Absolutely. So you go to the front, you have your spyglass. We're going to do a, uh, a wits and a notice roll. Now, I think it's the first time this scene you've done that, so you can add um, one onto that. If you have any advantages or anything, which I think Amelia might concerning being I, have, I have things. eagle eye, which says, with clear line of sight, can see up to a mile. A spyglass can pick out fine details. The book even says that with a spyglass up to a mile, I can see All right. an inscription that, on a ring. <laughs> so, is that activated uh, by a hero point? or It just says, no, it's gain one bonus die on risks reliant on keen vision. So you get a die for that. All right, let's see. That's one. That's two. Well, I just have one. I notice rolls or somebody trying to find. I usually just go by how many races to see, like, how much y'all Yeah, y'all I was just counting them out. I was just making my rolls. So uh, I got three raises, and then there's one die left over a seven if you want to buy it. Um, I will buy that. So take your hero point back, and I will give myself another danger point. Who knows? Just- all right well i didn't have to spend one yet so i got two hero points <laughs> yeah all right okay you see a ship out there at the oh. edge of the storm wall and there is a flag on this ship and it is a skeleton with a skeletal hand going like this it is a black oh. and flag okay do i recognize that that flag you do not all right but it definitely uh, feels uh pirate to you yeah (laughs) yeah and they're right in front of the storm wall yep like to the point right on the edge of it as almost the storm is kind of following it yeah okay yeah okay so uh, I, I close my spyglass and stow it in the in the holster on my belt, and I, I take off for the, I'm, kind of uh, whip my way through deck, probably uh, swing not swinging on ropes, but you know, kind of grabbing a rope and and jumping a little bit to get around things and moving in between people, probably shouting out orders a little bit, um, and then. Uh, looking for the captain. At, I assume he's at the helm. Yep, he is. He is up front, um, okay. giving orders. So I, uh, captain, there's Standing a ship like this as always. Captain, there's a there's a ship. I, it's gonna sound crazy, but it looks like the storm is perhaps riding on the on the stream of this ship. He doesn't seem surprised. When you, I, when you say this. Okay. And I kind of look at him for a second and I'm like, nothing? Okay. Uh, three guesses what the flag looks like. Was it a skull with a hand? Shushing the skull. That's the one. And he's so, still like not quite looking at you. He's still staring out at the storm. Do we keep on or do we move off? We're keeping on, Ace. Go find Gunner and tell him it's the Whisper. I, and I, I run off. I, I'm looking for Gunner. 
right. done. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. So I'll let you do that for a second. Uh, go find Gunner. Uh, Gianni, what are you doing after you give the captain your blessing? I'm going. Uh, I'm getting off the deck. Okay. Cool. So you're getting down below. Uh, and, and, you know, you definitely see people, uh, doing things, uh, you know, putting things away, uh, making sure you see this, uh, youngish man kind of close cropped hair and he has glasses and he's standing in his door and he's kind of looking around and he sees you and he says, what's going on? I'm afraid there is a, a, a storm coming. A storm. A storm, yes. He... And he bolts past you up onto the, 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 towards the deck. I assure you it will be there for a while. You do not have to run. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, you continue on. You do see, uh... Uh, the young woman who was throwing up over the side and Andreas uh, in in the in the galley and putting things away as well. Um, you probably have noted that the young man you just saw had been with Andreas too. I think Gianni probably would have noticed huh. that as well. I do not know if it is important to you, but your friend uh, that you arrived with uh, went up to the deck. I mean, that's kind of his choice. I just met him, so I don't know his idiosyncrasies. He was very interested when I told him there was a storm coming. Huh. Maybe he's never seen a storm at sea. So, um... Uh... I take it neither one of you are intending to go up there. No, no. Um, I do not wish it to be swept overboard. <laughs> Very good. Right. So, uh, Amelia, you're you're up there, and uh, you're you're looking for Gunner, and uh, the young man you'd seen with with the the man in the red coat, Andreas, goes flying past you as you're looking for Gunner. Oh, well, I guess he'll be fine. Gun arm! Well, Gun! He, he actually, he stops and he says, the captain, where is the captain? At the helm. He takes off again. All right, yeah, you find Gunner. Um, he's um, helping strap stuff down on the uh, port side of the ship. Um, taking down some of the, the sails and everything like that. He's like, Ace! What is it? Says it's the Whisper. The Whisper? After this is over, if you make it out of it, I'll make sure you do. I owe you one for last time, but uh, you're going to tell me what's up because Cap ain't saying anything. Come, come, come with me. Here, take this over. And he comes down and he, he kind of drags you along. He's like, I need your help with this. All right, I set two. All right, uh, he goes down uh, into into the, um, in, you know, down uh, below decks. And Gunner, you know, seems to have, have purpose. And as you're walking, he says to you, he says, the whisper is a pirate ship that we've run into before. The captain has no name except Silent Death. Well, that's a bit traumatic. As I assume the same follows him. Well, from what I understand, from what I've heard, from the first first mate and the captain, we have something on board that he wants. And you and I are going to secure it. Is it those papers I had to fetch yesterday? No, 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 nothing like that. 
All right, well, where do you want me to go? Come, come. You go to the captain's quarters. And uh, Gunner um, has a key. And you're not quite sure how. He has, he has the key. You feel like the captain may have, you know, as has been indicated, suspected something was going to happen. Um, he opens the, the captain's quarters and goes over to the captain's trunk. And he, he opens up the trunk and inside is this box. And it's a small box. It's about like this. It is metal. Uh, it looks pretty plain from the outside. Um, and it's very simple. And it has a tiny little uh, keyhole. And Gunner had, you know, another little uh, smaller key that he uses to, un to open this box. And inside it is this a bracer. It's like a, a, you know, a silver bracer that you would put on your arm. And it has five stones in it down, down the middle. They are gray and they sort of look like swirling clouds on the inside of these stones. They're, they're about like that big going down. And he closes the box. The three of you. Okay. So, uh, while, that, while that's happening, y'all are, are helping out. And Andreas, you hear your, you feel like excitement from your Davis. Just this surge of, you know, almost like greedy, you know, um, and he says, ah, it begins. As for Gianni, you're, there is, you feel like this, this fate pull, like something happened. And it's almost like something like pulls on your chest, like if someone were going to take your clothes and be like, mm. You know, and you feel that, like, off somewhere uh, below decks. As for Nanette, the whispering in your head that you try to suppress gets much, much louder. Uh, and you start to hear things like, Did you say something? I'm literally looking at what looks like nothing to you. And I turn back, but what? Huh. Must be the wind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Must be the, must be the, uh, the, the, the wind. And, and I keep uh, glancing at this space. <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, Davis looks very um, satisfied, like anticipating. Like if if he could have popcorn, he'd probably have popcorn. He is effectively all powerful, so there's technically nothing stopping him from man manifesting. He conjures popcorn. popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as for you, Amelia, when he opens this box and you see this item, you have a flash just, just for a moment when he opens the, like you're, like you're seeing through other eyes. And this time you see from what you can tell, you're looking at the backside of the storm for just a moment. The hell, what the hell is that? And then I shake it off and I look at God. I'm like, what? What? 
What? How do you want me to secure this? It didn't look like it was pretty secure in the in the hold. This would probably be the first place we look. They look if they board the ship. Do you want me to keep it in my chest? That might be wise. All right. Only Shouldn't you. wear it, though. I take it, eh? I I wouldn't. <laughs> Gunner, I wouldn't. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Gunner <clears throat> says now, Ace, you and I are the only ones who know where this is. If it needs to, it's to the go to the bottom of the ocean. Do you understand? I... And if, right. if I'm free to go, I, I run off and I head to my cabin or to yeah, the... Yeah, he hands you the box and... Yeah. I, uh... I don't put it in my chest. I put it in my, uh... The sack where I keep my dirty laundry. Okay. There we go. So only and, I and know guys, where this is. Yeah, and, and, and you all feel the other three of you who are kind of like, you know, the, the, the feeling intense, that, that stuff intensifies for a second, and then it kind of like disappears or, or fades a little bit. All right. So, um... I'm gonna go ahead and do. Let's see. Okay. Awesome. Let's do this. I'm just gonna see how the ships are doing and what's happening with that. All right. Okay. So. The three of you, um, are you, uh, Andreas and Gianni and Nanette? I'll get to, um, uh, Ace in a second. Um, what are you, are you going to continue doing what you're doing? Are you going to change tactics? Are you, um, first of all, what's y'all's mindset right now? Uh, how does Andreas feeling right now? What's, what's... Um. Andre Andreas is currently he's never seen his uh, Davis quite this happy unless he's kind of being forced to make a deal so this makes Andreas very uneasy um, to the fact that uh, the other two probably are taking notice that Andreas was like before he was like you know, let's tie some stuff down, maybe even, like, putting up some airs of, like, trying to be steady for, uh, for Nanette. But now Andreas keeps looking at some, a blank space in, to them, a blank space. Well, I don't know, to someone who can see the weave of fate, uh, <laughs> a blank space in the, in this, in the galley, um, while still simultaneously trying to, uh, but at like a much slower pace, like put things away, closing any and all, like closing um, doors, tying ropes as best as it can. Um, you know, like just trying to cinch things down, but at the same time, just like not sure what's going on, but also not wanting to like have a conversation with his davis while there's other people around who don't know about him mm -hmm. yeah and your davis is just is just sitting there as calm you know every time you look over just as you know smiles at you if you make contact with your eyes just a small smile um how is gianni feeling right now what's happening with gianni I uh, would say, uh, sorry, just a second. He uh, is looking for reassurance or at least a little guidance. So he probably reaches down uh, to his waist side where there is a waterproof leather pouch, opens it up and pulls out his sorte deck. Okay. 
and uh, probably just does, you know, a blind random cut to a card. Uh, I have a card in mind if you don't, uh, and I could go with that if you'd like, but... Uh... Uh, go ahead with the cards you have in mind, and I'll let you... I'll let you... Uh... I would say we that... It, the same one, so... If, uh... So, he, you know, I, I'm pulling from the entire deck at this point, and uh, I think that maybe the Five of Swords... That would make sense. Uh, and I give it a good long look, and I set it on the table in front of everyone. For those who aren't familiar with Sorte, Sorte deck are basically tarot decks. Um, and Gianni has quite skilled at reading tarot decks, even make his, makes his living. Uh, they call them Sorte, uh, decks here, and, um, they are read like tarot. Five of Swords is generally, uh, swords are generally about obstacles and they're generally about uh, facing huge problems. The Five of Swords is not great. It's kind of about uh, facing things you've put off and things like that, um, at least in mine. Um, how do you usually interpret that? How does Gianni interpret the Five of Swords? Gianni Gianni will actually just that's more important than what I'm saying. How does Gianni, Gianni pulls the card. How does he, what does he think about that? Gianni will actually uh, just begin rattling off things. And he'll be like, huh, the Five of Swords, as he places it out. The the, the, the number five is uh, the number of conflict and instability. But yet at the same time, the sword is the uh, symbol of the air. As the sword cuts through the air, so is the sword. It is about uh, discipline, and knowledge, uh, discipline, knowledge, uh, things of that like that. Uh, but at the same time, we are talking about the conflict and the change and instability. So it is two forces coming against one another. This is it's not exactly a good sign. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, with everything going on, why would it be? Yes, we're in a we're in a storm, and yes, I'm just gonna assume it's only going to be a really rough storm. It's more than that, I'm afraid. This is, this is uh, a storm is nature, and uh, I I would see uh, perhaps expecting that more with water, water, uh, water the, the 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 tempest to come. Yeah, that, that would make sense. Uh, no. Something else is happening. Hmm. So how is Nanette uh, feeling about the whole situation? She's sort of... I mean, she's paying attention to what uh, Gianni's trying to do here, but she's also kind of distracted, trying to see if there's any reflective surfaces in the galley. That she may have just missed. Hmm. Um. Cause she's trying to figure out where those whispers are coming from. Well, I mean, there's silverware around. Um. Uh, you know, there's like a, a little tiny mirror over the sink. Um. Small one. In in the galley. Holds that up. She goes over there and just like <laughs> pulls if it's not attached to anything she pulls it off and like sticks it somewhere far yeah, away it's just like on a nail so she can just yeah she just lift it off. and then just stuffs it in like a drawer or anywhere like out of the way that was um going to fall <laughs> em <right>. empathy em <laughs> empathy <laughs> uh, yeah i mean go ahead and roll if you want to try to try to figure out what uh she's she's doing um, go ahead and roll wit and empathy. Okay. Uh, three for wits, two for empathy, one for it the first time. <laughs> uh, two tens. Nice. Well, she was lying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, plus, uh, plus another raise, and then uh, two dice I can't use if you'd like to purchase so them. You don't need all those dice to know that she was lying. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that amount, um, you know, 
she's obviously lying about that. And obviously the mirror made her uncomfortable. And I would say Andreas has had enough contact with the outside world that he's aware of Porte mages and that they usually use reflective services to practice their sorcery. Now, that could mean a lot of things. It could mean she's one. It could mean she's afraid of one. It could mean a lot of different things. So what you do know is one, she was lying about that. And two, it probably has to do with poor taste somehow, but you're not sure how. And Annette like busies herself with other things in that kitchen that just like putting stuff away, just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I'm glad that you secured it, uh, making sure it would not fall. D right, do you so... can't say anything else about anything? Um, I'm going to uh, I'll actually uh really quickly look at uh Nanette's Arcana, and okay. I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to basically uh see what I, you know use that as a way to manipulate her a bit all right well if it helps her arcana is um the aristocrat mm -hmm. oh no it's it's thrones sorry it's thrones and that is um comforting and then um the other one is glyph which is superstitious mm -hmm. and uh I will probably uh, just maybe flip over to uh, the Empress. And I will say, well, we have one who wishes to care for us like a mother. Something that watches over us. I'm certain we will be all right. And I'll, I'll basically, uh, I'll go ahead and play a little bit to her arcana with comforting. You no, know, you are right. The captain is very capable. I'm sure he will see us through the storm. We have nothing to fear. Of course, yes. Okay. So um, before I go back to Amelia, um, I will ask you three. So are you going to continue down here? Uh, do any of your characters feel the need to, to go to another area or do something else before I move on? At the moment? Uh, my character will probably eventually make his way up to the deck and this be like, you had to do this to me? Hmm? <laughs> Send me here. Put me in the middle of this. Oh, yes. I know it was you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amelia, so after you hide uh, the, the the item, um, what, what are you going to do? What is Ace going I to do? As quickly as possible, I'd be returning back up to to the deck, so mm -hmm. I could uh, I would probably run back to the bow a little bit, or maybe even go up into the if we're not in the thick of the storm yet, if the storm wall is still a ways out, um, and there's no lightning, I would get back up in the crow's nest and use my spyglass again to see how close the storm and the uh, the whisper were uh, have have made it since I was away. Well, since you're away, um, things have progressed. Like, I mean, the ship, you, you really don't need your spyglass anymore. The ship is practically on top of y'all at this point. So incredibly fast. You're not quite sure what, what happened, but the storm uh, is here. And almost as soon as you step out onto the deck and note this, it starts to pitch. Like this, the huge long hauler pitches from this massive wave. And I'm going to have everybody roll no matter where you are at. Um, go ahead and let's do a uh, finesse and athletics to see how well uh, y'all are staying up. Um, if, or if your sailing is better, uh, to kind of know how to roll with the punches, I will allow you to do that as well. 
So either athletics or sailing along with a finesse to stay upright, please. And don't forget your bonus dies. And then I also get another one because I have sea legs. Yep. So you need at least one race to stay upright. And you'll need another race um, to go ahead and, um, you know, make sure you don't hit anything and you don't get injured because things are going to start to to move and make sure you don't run into stuff. And I'm going to use one of my danger points. You now need five points more for these raises. So you will need a total of 30 on all the dice you're going to be rolling uh, to go ahead and make sure uh, you are going to stay upright. Um, I have a three in sailing and I rolled three tens. So that means I get three additional dice, right? Because they explode. That tens is uh, when you have five in a skill. Uh, yeah. Three, three oh. is when you can just reroll one of your other dice. Yeah. Oh, is that okay? Okay, I'm and sorry. I was looking at the death spiral. That's my bad. This, uh, you do get an extra die. So, um, and any advantages or anything you want to use, uh, please go ahead and do so. But remember, you need 15 for each race. Uh, um, as Andreas is very distracted between everything going on, I fail. You're going to purposely fail. I'm going to purposely fail and take okay. a hero point. You get a hero point? Okay. Uh, I think at least one of us had to do it in the opening one. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I will actually have the 30 necessary, but I do have a dice left over. You do? Okay. I do. All right. I am not going to buy that at this point. Um, how did Nanette do? Uh, well, I got the raise to stay upright, but that is about as possible as I can do. Okay. All right. Okay. How did, uh, and you did well, uh, Ace did well. They got, she got 30, right? Uh, yeah, I got, uh, at least 45. Races. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. So, all right. Um, so... Amelia, uh, you know, you step out, you kind of see this is happening, and then just the, the impact of, of this wave. Uh, but you manage to, to sit upright and not, uh, you know, hit on anything or, or whatever. You manage to kind of brace for impact. Um, Gianni, you also managed to do so um, as well. Um, you know, you managed to just steady yourself and not lose your balance. Um, Andreas, you go flying, uh, into the counter of the galley and, um, you are going to take one wound from that. And Nanette, poor Nanette, she stays upright, um, and Andreas is on the ground. So not only because he completely failed, so he hits that and, you know, he slides, hits, hits the gallery table and kind of falls down. And, uh, as for Nanette, she manages to stay upright um, but the cabinet she had been working on, like, comes and smacks her on, on the head. And uh, you will take a wound as well. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I mean, this ship is now quite on top of y'all. Um, from Amelia's perspective, we're going to start back with Ace on the on the deck looking at this ship. Um, you now see it pretty clearly. You have the the eagle eye, so, you know, I'm not going to make you... Um, so, yeah, you know, you have the flag. This looks like a ship that was cobbled together um, with parts and pieces and things from uh, different ships, uh, different types and stuff from what you can gather. And... Um, and, you know, kind of, you know, how pirates are, you know, trying to scavenge and get what they can and, and put things together. Um, but this looks like a, a very hefty, uh, a very hefty ship to you. And um, you see um, the people on deck, the pirates on the deck, um, preparing grappling hooks. Prepare to be boarded! All right. The call goes out from your position, so you hear it behind you. 
prepare to be boarded, prepare to be boarded. And it kind of goes down and it comes down all the way to y'all in the galley as the crew are, are shouting it to each other and passing the word along uh, the rest of the ship. And uh, some of the other crews start preparing arms. They start pulling out swords and things. That doesn't sound like a storm. <laughs> you still hear the thunder. It's still... What, what, what do you mean? Uh, 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 what? Boarded? Storm? Uh, oh, no. I, I think I've read about this. I think we're being boarded by pirates. Yeah, that's happened to my cousins a few times. That, well, most of them, not all of them survived. Can I try to pick off one of the, one of the boarders with a grappling hook? Absolutely. Um, well, you all are, uh, so I want you three... Uh, to kind of be thinking about how your character would handle this situation. Would they try to duck and run? Would they try to go up and help on the deck? Um, um, what are they going to do? And before I get to Ace's role for that, um, there is a crew member who comes by and says, are any of you uh, decent with, with a weapon? We can use all hands up there to prevent the boarding. Uh, I, I, I can use a sword. Go, I... go, go. And he like starts, you know... <laughs> And he looks at you two as well. I am capable of other things, but I, I, I will see what I can do on the deck. O only a hunting rifle? <laughs> maybe maybe it's best if I just barricade myself in my my quarter. He kind of shakes his head at you and like moves on. And, you know, you see he has a sword. And everything. Okay, so Ace, let's get to your shot here. Um, okay, so uh, I'll go ahead. It's going to be, uh, I believe, uh, firearms are finesse, finesse and, and like if, aim. Yeah, um, and aim or you know weaponry, um, depending. Okay. So yeah, if well, aim's better for you, go ahead. So I have dead eye and fish in a barrel. So Sweet. dead eye allows me to get a plus one bonus die when aiming with a pistol and I'll, or a blunderbuss, and I'm going to use my sidearm, which is a blunderbuss, or a pistol. Okay. I don't know what we do, decided it was. It's something. I think We'll call it a, a blunderbuss. Um, and then Fish in a Barrel says that when I use Deadeye, I can spend a raise to reduce the... St if, if this is a brute squad, I can reduce their strength by my finesse rank, which is four. Right. Sweet. Sounds so, perfect to me. Okay, so I have four in finesse. I have two in aim. I get a bonus die from Deadeye, and I get a bonus die because it's the first time I've rolled this in this. I do have a question for you. With my sea legs, does this count as a physical test? A physical risk that I could get another bonus die? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're on this ship, and, and you're preparing to be boarded. You're definitely taking a risk okay. being on the end of okay. the ship here. So I've got a few dice floor. here. It, it's yeah. going to be a two-handed roller. I'll be right back. Nice. <laughs> All right, and I'm still just looking for tens, right? You're looking for tens at the moment. Okay, so I have... I did roll one zero, so I am going to roll... Uh, I'm going to re-roll something here. Let me get all my raises out of the way. Um, Let's re-roll this one. And that is, that doesn't add up to anything. So I actually have, um, let's see, let me make sure that there's not something better I could do here. Do that and that. Oh, there we go. I got it. So yeah, add, trying to figure out the best way to get these raises is sometimes a little bit of a, a little bit oh, of a logic yeah. puzzle. So I got um, one, two, three, four, and that uses all my dice. All right, four, excellent. So you pick off four of them uh oh, from, the, from the ship yeah um you know not all of them were holding but you know you took the shots you could take so you managed to get four of them uh one of them was right on the edge of whipping the grappling hook and you blast him and, ah, and he goes off to sh nice. you know good will thunder 
and uh, another one, you know, hits the deck and then you watch him slide and everything like that. You get another one that was heading up to the heading up to get a better vantage point, you know, um, and the other one had gone to help the first guy, but, um, you know, ended up getting shot by you and following him off the side of the ship. So that didn't exactly work out so well for him. Awesome. <laughs> Yay. <All right. laughs> so cool. So you're doing that. Um, and the three of you, uh, what are we, uh, Andreas? So let's see how you, what, what is Andreas going to do? Uh, Andreas will uh, make his way as quickly as possible to the deck of the ship. Um, and when, as he emerges out of the, uh, onto the deck, he'll pull his, uh, he'll pull his blade in his left hand and his mangosh in his uh, right. Um so and you... mm -hmm. and uh kind of take a look um uh and take a look and see uh kind of assess the situation because he knows they're being boarded but he kind of wants to try to figure out where he would be most useful quickly right so yeah um you see when you come up onto the deck you see the storm is up i mean you were just up here like not an hour or two ago. I mean, you guys had been down there and putting stuff away and you saw that the storm had been like, you've never heard of storms moving in that fast, honestly. Or the, or, or where did this ship come from? You know, <laughs> like, why was this here? You, you just knew that there was a storm probably coming, but there is indeed a ship. It is off the, um, the, the front of the ship, the fore of the ship. And uh, you hear shots, uh, ringing out, um, and you hear orders being shouted, um, you know, tack that down, you know, get, you know, pass out the gun, you know, all that sort of stuff that's going on, a lot of chaos. Um, it is now very, very, it's cold, and it has started to rain now on top of the deck of the ship, for those of you who are on the deck of the ship. The thunder is almost like a constant rumble now. No longer can you like count in between and decide, you know, how long, you know, until the storm it is here. And it is now this constant rumbling uh, that you hear throughout, throughout the ship. Um, so uh, based on that, where would Andreas be uh, uh, most comfortable? Um. Andreas is kind of assessing the situation. And you said there are people uh, throwing lines over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, grappling hooks. You can see that towards the fore of the ship. And, like, are there also um, sharpshooters, like, taking aim and that kind of stuff over? Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff going on. You see people with swords, and you see um, people with guns on the pirate shooting and stuff like that. And shooting on your ship as well, the Utrecht. Okay, um... um what Andreas is going to do is, um, uh, he is go uh, he's going to approach uh, the the side of the deck uh, towards uh, where people are starting to board over, and where there's like some sh like a group of sharpshooters on the other side. Uh, he is going to um, uh, he's going to go. Uh, I guess we're gonna um, this favor you always owe me, and I'll spend a hero point. Mm -hmm. And I want a bright light to flash right in their eyes, blinding them right before um, they shoot. So they all jerk and miss all of our crew to protect it. Yeah. So uh, Ace, you're on top of the ship and you're sh and then a bright flash like from somewhere behind you uh, happens. And the guys who were shooting kind of, you know, tur turn away Uh from that and if you turn around you see the uh you know andreas the guy in the red coat that you had just met standing there um uh, how would that look andreas like after after he does this um would the with, glow be dying down like could the glow would be dying down with that one <laughs> i told you that bloody shirt was too bright <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, Rue will, uh, or uh, not Rue, uh, Andreas will uh, will look at uh, Amelia and go, you have no idea. <laughs> Just don't set my hair on fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Gianni, what is Gianni going to do at this point? 
Uh, well, I'm looking over at the other ship. Does it appear the captain is at the helm of the other ship? Okay, so uh, your Gianni is going to to go up and and yeah. see what he can do. All right, so you saw pretty much what has been described already, and you're looking for the captain. Uh, see if the captain is there. Um, how are you going to go about that? Just by observing? Are you going to use your your threads? Are you going? You're literally looking across to see who is helm who is at the helm of the other ship. Does it look like? You know, usually I my character imagines the captain's always going to be either the biggest guy or the one with the largest hat. Right, right. Um, you do see, um, a rather large man, uh, standing near the helm of the ship. Um, he looks um like uh, you've seen uh Vodachi dressed this way um v vodachi sailors um it, it's very vodachi style clothing that you kind of notice on this man he's also very large i'd say by your guesstimate he's probably six five or six four somewhere in there tall tall dude and not skinny bean pole but like you know stolid size matters not uh <laughs> i look at him uh, is he at the helm? Is he at the wheel? He is standing next to the helm, and there's a smaller man um, uh, standing next to him who's actually at the wheel of the ship. But what you do see um, is that he's not shouting, this tall man, not the one at the helm, but the tall man is not shouting. He is making signs at the helm, at, standing next to the helm. Uh, of the ship and it seems like people are looking and understanding um they kind of turn look at him he'll sign at them uh do you know does how many languages does shiani know uh i actually have the uh linguist skill or the uh the talent so i know all languages it's sign language like deaf people use and he is signing orders to his sailors. Well, we see something new every day, but it doesn't matter. And I, I'm, uh, I am, if I may, uh, mm -hmm. I will hold my hand up in the air and I will envision this, the strands of fate running through it. And I will look at the line of fate, however faint or strong it is between me and the man on the helm of the other ship. And I will start to this wave, weave my hand in the air. But in reality, I'm wrapping the thread around my hand. And then after a moment, I'm going to take a lash and I'm going to yank on it as hard as I can. And that lash, uh, I'm using the ability of pull and literally using the strand of fate. I'm going to cause him to lose his balance. Okay. Uh, so the way it writes up is uh, you can pull another character towards you by grabbing hold of the strands and physically tugging on them. You must be able to see your target and able to use weave. You cannot pull characters through walls or stationary objects, but non-stationary objects such as tables and chairs will move out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but with the, the level that I'm doing, he will also, if it breaks, if he, he like runs into the helm or something, uh, which I don't think it would break, but he would take a point of damage. Uh, but okay. he, could, uh, he could tumble off the side of the banister if he was up against that. Right, right. So uh, he falls. And, um, I mean, he, he you know, falls to the deck. He doesn't, like, fall overboard or over the... You know, he kind of falls down, neck, like, next to the helm. I'm and he gets it. up. Yeah. Eventually. Uh, it, well, we'll give it a second. So, you, so you've, uh, you know, pulled him down. And take in those lashes. So you have like two lashes right now um, from blessing the captain and and whatever. Um, how do those look for Gianni? Like, it's not the worst. Uh, eventually, that could pay out, that could backfire on me. But essentially, I could pay it out in blood uh, and take two wounds, or uh, you know, or just hang on to it and just eventually it could bite me in the tail. Eventually, it comes to. <laughs> eventually, it comes to. Um, yeah. Okay. So Nanette, sweet Nanette, who just wanted to get away from her 
her wedding and is now is now where where she's never been before what is what is she it's, doing it's very it's all very exciting and she loves that but also um probably is going to see if there is a galley knife that she can grab and then probably just hunker in her um cabin because she has never been in physical confrontation before so <laughs> okay all right <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, um, so you're, you're getting ready, you know, you grab a galley knife, which is pretty easy to do. Um, most of the people have, uh, gone out. Um, they've, they've gone out and up onto the deck to help, you know, get, get rid of the borders and stuff like that. But on your way back with the knife, you see, uh, a young, a young man and he has glasses and they're up on top of his head and he is he is he is looking around and uh seem to recall having seen him like at some point um and but he seems to be looking around very very intently um as you're as you're heading he's kind of like looking into rooms and he seems very frantic so are you lost do you need help finding uh, the Gary? Is that way? No, 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 I don't. I'm I'm looking for something, something uh, I've lost. I've lost. You haven't happened to see a, a box, have you? About, you know, this big, uh, maybe metal. I, I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds like we should probably be hiding or fighting. I can't, I can't. I have to find it. I have to find it. But I, I suppose I can help you look. Where was the last place you saw it? The last place I knew it was was the captain's quarters. Well, is, you, you, you don't seem like a member of the crew. So why would you... Why would you need it? Okay. So are you going to so what's your what are you what's your goal? Are you trying to get him to tell you what Yeah, I'm trying to figure are? out what his deal is. Um uh probably cuz it sounds kind of suspicious that he's not a crew member. He's looking for something of the captain's. Um definitely sus. Super sus. And Nana's pretty decent at reading people. Um it this is indeed Charles, by the way, in case anybody uh, did not. I always pegged him as the older fellow, but not realizing he was a, a younger. Um... He's younger. He kind of feels like a Eddie Redmayne in terms of looks. So not young, young, but not, you know. Um. Okay. So what tactic is she going to take to try to get him to, to reveal more information? The same uh, one she tried to always... friends, use empathy. Is she gonna intimidate him? Probably. Is she's definitely going the helpful route and seeing if she can get some more from like, okay, well, describe it. Uh, where would you think it would be? You know, that sort of um, trying to go for the uh, the empathy route is obviously what she's going for. But okay, uh, let's go for uh, panache um, then, uh, because that usually is is per and then um, whichever. Um, probably empathy would probably be the best bet in terms of that, trying to get him to tell you, uh, what's going on. One raise, uh, to kind of get him to at least trust you. If you get two raises, uh, you can, uh, get him to, to reveal a little bit more information. Like, one raise, he won't exactly, like, push you away. But two raises, he will actually, like, reveal something. So I think I got some of uh, Rue's luck here, because I got three tens and then an eight and a one. So I've got these two dice left over, um, but I do have um, three raises. All right. So uh, his glasses were up here, and uh, he pulls them down, and he, and he puts his hands gently on your shoulder. And he says, what is your name? Um, it's Nanette, monsieur. Nanette. You are Montaigne, right? Yes. So he'll start speaking to you in Montaigne. And he'll say, 
He'll say, I have a deal with the captain. I'm supposed to be helping transport this item. And this is what these people who are coming aboard this ship want and they cannot get it. Okay, but if it's not in the captain's quarters, maybe it was hidden somewhere safe. Perhaps, I don't know. I only know the captain and I don't know what sort of spies or what other methods they might have used. I want to confirm its location for myself. All, all right, well, how, how about I help you look? Um, but we should probably be hiding. <laughs> it's like, well, I've done most of these rooms. I don't think anyone will come down here for a while yet. We can look. Well, all right, I, I, will, I will assist you. All right, so you're going to go with this guy. Yeah, uh, this and, and he will say, I'm Charles, by the way. Oh, it's lovely to meet you. Is, is he Montaigne as well? Or... He's not. He has a um, Avalonian accent. Um, but he apparently speaks Montaigne. Um, but with an Avalonian accent. Um, so, yeah. So you're going to go and, and help. You know, he's, he's searching and he says, remember, it's a box about this big. Iron, very simple looking. Oh, all right. Okay. So, all right, back above. All right, so at this point, um, since, you know, we have boarding and we have everything going on, um, we are going to go into action sequence approach, which is how this works is everybody's going to tell me what they want to do for their action. I'm assuming Nanette will be continuing to search or, you know, unless something comes up, which it may. Um, and once that happens, um, I will give you, um, once everybody tells me, I will give you a trait and skill to use, and I will tell you what the consequences and things are. Everybody rolls at the same time, okay? And whoever um, gets the most raises acts first. And that's how it works um, for everyone to know. So, um, Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start with um, Amelia. What is Amelia going to do at this point? Um, <clears throat> seeing the the borders, I, I'm probably going to continue to shoot at borders and try to fight them off. Okay, great. Okay, so you're going to fight at borders to try to shoot them off. Um, I will let you know what your, your risk is for that in a sec, or what your role is for that in a second. Andreas, what are you going to do for your action? Um, Andreas, I am going, uh, as I am a duelist and have access to the maneuvers, um, Andreas is going to, I'm going to declare Bash as my maneuver I'm using. And then, um, what Andreas is going to do is as one of them swings over to try that, he's going to run up to the banister and just bash them with the pommel of his man gauche just to knock them, uh, basically stop their momentum and knock them right into the, uh, into the drink. Perfect. Cause at this point they've, you know, I mean, Amelia did a lot and the others did a lot, um, but there's quite a few for them. So there are some hooks that are over and they are trying to pull the ship closer um, so they can be boarded and they're trying to get people over there to start and try to take over the ship. So that is definitely what's happening. Gianni, what's your action? Me and my wonderful uh, swashbuckling ways. I uh, am ready to uh, turn the table on them and I want to uh, find a taut rope to swing over to their ship. Oh, okay. All righty then uh <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> and <laughs> all right didn't and see that nah. one coming did y'all <laughs> well we should have expected it after how you got into this ship but yeah what <laughs> um and nanette you're gonna continue to search yep okay so for um amelia your role is going to be your finesse and aim uh to shoot um, which is what you wanted to do. 
Um, so you will need to do that. You can add any advantages and spend that if you'd like. Um, Andreas, um, you're doing a, so this is going to be, um, do you have any dueling things that would allow you to help you here in terms of advantages or? Uh, no, just my style that lets me do stuff, but, uh, so I can use either wits or finesse when forming okay. a weaponry pool. Whichever, so take whichever's higher for you. So mm -hmm. it'd be finesse and probably athletics, I'm going to say. Athletics it is. Um, um do I get a bonus die for the flare which I described it? Absolutely. I will give you that. Um, and uh, Gianni, you are going to, you're going to be swinging. So this is definitely going to be a finesse and athletics. I have to well, climb up there and swing over. No way I could uh, swing that for panache since I'm doing such things so over the top. Sure. Well, okay. Yeah, if you're trying to, I'll, I'll allow it. So panache and athletics, and I'll give you a die. If it's your first roll of this, remember to take your extra die, everybody. And um, I will give Gianni an extra one for his flair as well in doing that for his. So um, Andreas and Gianni will get one for style. And uh, Nanette, you're going to do um, wits and... Uh, notice to be looking for this uh, item and stuff. So what I want everybody to do. Um, so here's the thing. Um, if you miss uh, for the three of you that are on decks and swinging, you will need at least one to accomplish what you're trying to do. For two raises, you will avoid the consequence of being injured. For three, um, three raises, I will give you an opportunity to give yourself an advantage with whatever you're doing. It will fall within your favor. Um, for Nanette, uh, you will need one to find what you're looking for. Um, or, and two, um, if you, if you do two, you will be able to kind of recognize where you're at and where it's hidden from, where, where it's, um. Where, where you found it like you you will you will realize that it's that it was Amelia's bag that you found it in okay so everybody roll their dice um add those up add in any advantages and everything roll them up and let me know how ra many raises you got Ooh, I got a bonus die from bink thank you sweet Ala just got one as well Ooh, awesome oh good maybe I can make one of these nine something useful for once there's yours john another die a bonus die yep thanks bank and there's michael's yep let me roll one more then he's hooking us up all right i'm gonna re i'm gonna use my re-roll for having three in athletics oh okay. Right. Um, let's have a, uh, if uh, Amelia is done counting, Ace is done counting. Uh, yeah, I got, uh, one, two, I got four raises um, and I have one to purchase if you'd like. Okay. Um, can I, did I have enough that I could spend one to reduce the Brute Squad strength again? Um, sure. Okay. Sure. All right. So you got how many raises total? Four. Four? Okay. So you're shooting and you're shooting, but there, there are pirates everywhere. So you're, you know, blasting them off. They've started to pull the ship and, and everybody is fighting valiantly. There's just a lot of them. And, um, you know, you're shooting four of them off the thing and the ship is coming closer. So you're quitting yourself, you know, you're, you're, you're blasting as much as possible. Wait. Okay. And then how many raises did you get, Andreas? I got six raises. How many Gianni did you get? Five. How many did Nanette? How many did you? Four. four. Okay. I actually should have done that six, five, four, and four, but we'll, we'll go in that order last time. What happens still happens. Um, Okay, so Andreas, you grab uh, 
describe how how this works you got six so you can you can uh go ahead and describe how he does this and then i'll give right. you what sort of advantage you got all right i'll burn the one race to complete my action a second race to avoid the consequence yeah um and then uh leaving me with four wow um so uh andreas as as one of their people is um uh swinging over uh he basically takes his uh Man, uh, Mangosh hand and just kind of sheaths it really quick and then just goes what if this works and punches them right in the face <laughs> knocking them off uh, hopefully yeah. knocking them down into the uh, into the drink uh, and if you would like because um, I think it would be mildly humorous because of how quickly this happened and it, he was kind of not expecting it he kind of holds on to this Strangely taut rope that someone who has five raises might need to use immediately. Yeah, um, sure. So, you know, you punch this guy and this guy, you know, makes this ah, and he kind of, he almost, you know, you, you take him out and he almost by like a toe almost and he falls down into the drink, but he takes out one of the boards they were trying to bring over onto the ship at the same time. So he takes that with him. So you kind of messed that up for you kind of messed that up for them as well. And then yes, if you would like to swing over, I will allow you to do that with your last two raises. Uh, uh yeah, I'll use actually I was gonna use the um use my use the raise to create the advantage for um uh Gianni. Oh, okay. So you're gonna you, use yeah, Gianni you, the, the... Yeah, I'm gonna create I'm gonna give the opening to Gianni. Okay, yeah. So you create the opportunity. Space for him to fly over. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, so then Gianni had five. So yeah, you grab the rope and and apparently that man you just met has cleared out uh, the space you were going to swing over from. And uh, and you swing over um, and you needed two. So you have two extra ones. So I'll give you All an right. option. You can take out a couple more people or you can do something else of suitable flair if Gianni would like. All right, so uh, so it was two successes, uh, one to get across, one to uh... Good consequence. All right, so I have three left. You have th you have three left. Okay, uh, I would like to uh, preferably land near where the uh, the device is that would drop anchor. Okay. Right. And uh, I would like to spend a hero point for uh, got it and immediately dis... Oh, sorry, that's a disarm trap. It won't allow me to do that. Uh, I will instead... I'm going to find a way to uh, drop anchor somehow. Someone's okay. played Sea of Thieves. <laughs> yeah, so you're going to uh, attempt to drop their anchor. Okay. Excellent. I actually have never played that game. It's and a valid tactic. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so Nanette, you um, end up finding, you know, you're looking around and you're down in the quarters and you just have this, it's almost like the little voices that you can hear are guiding you like to kind of where you need to go. It's like, keep going. Keep going. And you come upon like a cot that has like a, a sack uh, hanging there. Is um my companion still with me? He is. Uh, he is in the room with you, but he's looking at like the other side of the room. And I don't. So here's. I don't know if I trusted him, um, with his explanation. Mm hmm. Would it be possible to use some of these raises to stash this item on my person? Absolutely. So you've used one, and you and you now know that this is like Amelia's bunk. You kind of recognize some of this stuff, and and so you realize that she she had this thing, whatever it was. Also very strange. Right. So you have two but... races that you can uh, uh, stash it on you if you like somehow. At least I'm crew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it... about this big. Probably in um uh, like. I don't want to say like stuff it in her knickers, but that's where she's hidden all of her jewelry as well. Like she's probably fashioned some sort of little pocket nice. <laughs> in her things. So she's she like wiggle it in there. 
Any luck over there? I I do not see it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say it's gonna take a risk. Go ahead and and do your convince and wits here. I don't think I've used that combination before. So I think it was panache and convince last right. time. So yeah. three raises all right so he says uh keep looking keep looking you know that's more than enough just one raise to do what you need this is a big ship maybe it's somewhere else all right so um meanwhile um gianni we're gonna we're gonna go to gianni gianni has landed and has dropped anchor and uh, on on the the ship, um, Amelia is fighting and shooting, and uh, Andreas is you know getting ready to fight as well. And the net is trying to hide this thing from someone she's suspicious of. Gianni is on this enemy ship, and when you look up, you see that man that you had seen at the helm. And he has the man that was at the helm before, you know, next to him. And he looks at you, you know, he kind of strides up to you. He, like I said, he's kind of wearing Vodachi clothes, uh, you know, in a very like naval Vodachi kind of style. Um, he's got short hair. He's wearing a hat, which you admire, you know, you've never seen anything quite like it. And like I said, he's quite a big fellow. And he is wearing a uh, black and gold, which suits the, the flag that you see, have seen at the top of the ship. And he starts signing to you. And what happens is the guy next to him translates. You don't need it because because you can, you know, you understand, but that's not the usual. So he has, and the man next to him says, you have stepped aboard the whisper, surrender. And we will end it there for the evening. It is nine o'clock. Oh. Nicely nice. done. Nice. So. I look forward to it. I hope uh, everybody had fun. Make sure to uh, tune in to our uh, other, to the Rick and Rats uh, channel. Um, you have uh, illuminated pages coming up. What day is that? Uh, Sunday, Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah. And that features myself as the GM and Ala as one of our, one of our uh, investigators. Yep, and, and there was another one, uh, The Voyages of on Monday, uh, Star Trek. Yes. Um, and that is super fun. Um, and y'all should check, definitely check that one out. Congratulations to our winner of the PDF. And I hope y'all join us next week for chapter two to find out what is going to happen. And I wish you fair winds and following seas to everyone. And we will see you next week. Thank y'all. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.